Hey guys, welcome back to this Flame game development series where we are making a simple platformer game using the Flame engine. So in the last video, we just updated this project to make it work with the latest Flame release. And in this video, I'm going to make the door component interactable. Basically, I want the players to advance to the next level when they enter into a door. So to indicate which door should open which level, I'm going to store that information with the door object in the tmx file itself. This will allow us to easily modify the game without having to make any code changes. But before we get into that, I'd like to address a point that one of my discord members brought up. You might remember that when I added these characters in the level, I actually placed two objects for each character. One object represents the actual position and size and the other one is just to help us visualize the level better. So originally, I avoided using a single object for this because then we would have needed to perform some calculations while placing the component in the game. This was mainly because of how coordinates are stored by these styled objects. But on a second thought, I feel that maintaining two objects in level file for each character is not optimal and might result in bugs as the level grows. So to avoid that, I'll delete all the underlying objects and just keep the image objects around. And now, for our object spawning code to work with these image objects, we'll have to set their type property to player, coin and door. I'll quickly repeat the same steps for level 2 as well. Once that is done, let's run the game and check how it looks. As you can see, the objects are still getting spawned, but all of them are shifted down along the y-axis by their height. So to fix this, we'll have to modify their initial position while spawning them. For this, I'll go to the spawn actors method of level class. Here in this for loop, I'll create a local position variable which will be a vector2 of spawnpoint.x, spawnpoint.y and to adjust the y offset, I'll subtract spawnpoint.height from the y component. Now we can use this variable as position for all the cases. And since size is also common for all of the actors, I'll extract out that as well. Now if I save this and check the game, you can see that everything is back to normal. And if I quickly switch to level 2, you can see that this level is fine as well. Ok, so now let's see how to make the doors interactable. For this, I'll open up level 1 in tiled. Here, if I select the door object, you can see that we get a custom properties section under properties panel. We can add our own custom properties here by right clicking and selecting add property. This will open up a new dialog where you can enter a name and type of this new property. In my case, I'll name this as next level and set the type to string. Once you click OK, you should see your new property listed here. So as I want this door to take players to level 2, I'll set the value for this property as level2.tmx. Now I'll repeat the same steps for the door in level 2 as well. And since I don't have any more levels, I'll set the value of next level to level1.tmx here. This will basically keep the player looping between level 1 and level 2. In your case, if you have more levels, you can set this to appropriate value. Ok, so now that we have stored the necessary info with the door objects, let's go back to the spawn actors method of our level class and read this information. To do that, if the current spawn point type is of type door, I can access spawn points dot property which is nothing but a list of all the custom properties. And as I know for sure that I only have a single custom property for doors, I can directly access the first element using dot first. And to get the value of this property, I can use dot value. Ok, so now that we have got hold of the next level that should be loaded by this door, Let's go to the door class and add a callback function that will be triggered when player enters the door. So I'll add an optional nullable parameter of type function to doors constructor. And let's name this one as on player enter. Then next, to make the door collidable, we'll first add the collision callbacks mixin to this class. And then in the onload method, I'll add a rectangle hitbox with its collision type set to collision type dot passive. And finally, I'll override the onCollisionStart method. 
This method is similar to the on-collision method, but gets triggered only at the start of a new collision. This is perfect for our use case because we want to perform some action only once when a player enters into the door. So in here, I'll first check if other is player. And if this is true, we can call the on player enter callback. Oh, and for this to actually work, I'll have to store the callback as a member in this class and input to the constructor will have to be this dot on player enter. Okay, now back in level dot dart, while creating the door component, I'll set the on player enter to an anonymous function which just calls game ref dot load level. And as the level name, we can use this spawn point dot property dot first dot value. And that is it. If I run this now, we should be able to switch between levels using the doors. Okay, and as you saw, once the player entered into the door, level 2 got loaded. And if I go to door of this level, we are again taken back to level 1. So yeah, seems to be working exactly how we want. And that is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing as well. Hope to see you in the next one.